My name is David Schwartz. We're here at the Christ Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. I practice obstetrics and gynecology, which I've been doing for 35 years. I do a lot of minimally invasive surgery, along with gynecology and urogynecology. How long have I been using Thunderbeat? And I would say at least two, two, two and a half, perhaps three years. Um, I started doing laparoscopic hysterectomies, um, then transitioned to robot for a very short period of time, and then found that laparoscopically uh, using the sticks, I found was more superior than using the robot for me, and I transitioned back to that. And at that time, about three years ago, I started using the Thunderbeat. Uh, the Thunderbeat is a remarkable instrument because not only is it ultrasonic energy, but it is also bipolar energy. So the two buttons on it, we can use ultrasonic and bipolar to cut and seal, or we can just use bipolar with a second button just to seal a vessel. Nothing else on the market works as well as that. When you have to take many more bites um, and get bleeding, when you have difficulty seeing the pedicles because your device is too large um, or your device doesn't work all the time, that um, makes it more difficult for me to do a good job for the patient. The Thunderbeat um, doesn't do any of that. Number one, it's a small jaw that can be used both for dissecting and grasping the tissue. And the tissue doesn't slide away like it does with some of the other forms of energy that we've used in the past. I usually use about 75% of the jaw, get a good bite, and activate uh, the seal and cut mode, and take a number of bites as I work through the infantibular pelvic ligament or the uterovarian ligament, work my way down the cardinal ligament and the uterine vessels, and then dissect the bladder off of this lower uh, uh, uterine segment, and then either continue into the vagina or do a supracervical hysterectomy. But the best part is that now there's the Thunderbeat OEJ, and I have been empowered to do a better job with vaginal hysterectomies, whereas I'm able to use this form of energy to make the vaginal hysterectomy easier, I feel safer, and empowers me to do a better job for my patients. When I do open abdominal hysterectomies, which is very rare, I've also been using the uh, Thunderbeat OEJ again for that. And you might ask, why are you using um, an energy source when you could clamp, cut, and tie? Well, whether it's vaginal or laparoscopic or an open abdominal case, when you clamp, cut, and tie, you end up with a pedicle. And that pedicle left is somewhere around a centimeter long. And that pedicle has to necrose. And with, necro with necrosis, there's inflammation and pain and scarring. When I use the Thunderbeat and the Thunderbeat OEJ, there's no pedicle because the actual device is sealing the vessel and then cutting the vessel right where it's being sealed. So there's nothing to necrose. And so there's much less post-operative pain. There's much less necrosis, inflammation, scarring. And I, again, it's going to empower the physician to do a better job for his or her patient. Let me just tell you about the ergonomics of the device. The device is very, very comfortable in my hand. It's like using a Haney clamp, although there is two buttons on that device which I can easily access for my uh, cut and seal mode or just my seal mode. It works, I have small hands, and this is one of the devices that works very well in my hands, and it doesn't, I don't get tired. Um, as I'm using the device, as I have found with other devices that are larger, or I have to exert more pressure so the tissue doesn't slip. Uh, the jaw is serrated, and so it holds the tissue in place very, very well while the energy is working to cut and seal or seal, and the tissue doesn't slip out. In, addi in addition, this device enables me to dissect tissue and to grasp tissue, so it's multifunctional where I can have one device in my hand, whether it's laparoscopic, vaginal, or abdominal, and do a number of different things while I'm doing my surgery with it. I use the harmonic um, ACE, and I have used the ligature. The ligature, I think, creates a lot of heat and a lot of steam, and the uh, harmonic ACE is an okay device, but the Thunderbeat seems to be more effective and quicker. I don't believe in rushing through surgery. I believe in being efficient through surgery. 
And surgery is like having a dance partner. And if you both know your steps and you minimize those steps, it's gonna look a lot better and it's gonna go a lot smoother. Your surgery is gonna go a lot smoother when you use a device that's going to empower you to go quicker without rushing and not to have um, abnormal bleeding and to be able to work through the case. How do I deal with the heat using any of the energy devices? And number one, I'm gonna to wanna to use the smallest energy device or the device that has the smallest jaw because there's less of a chance uh, compared to a larger jaw of causing any damage by touching other tissue. The Thunderbeat and the Thunderbeat OEJ uh, fit that uh, concern of mine. In addition, with the Thunderbeat and the Thunderbeat OEJ, there's less, I find, there's less steam or there's less smoke. And it's really not smoke, it's, it's heat and steam. And there's always a suction device nearby that's suctioning that away so you don't get any burns. When I use some of the other devices for vaginal hysterectomy, since it's a very small, confined space, we did find that once in a while we would um, burn the sidewall of the vagina. This has never happened with the Thunderbeat because it is much smaller and it's much easier to have um, a suction device right alongside of it protecting the sidewall and aspirating any of the steam. Another tip I would share with you in protecting the uh, vagina from being burned um, is when I initially start a vaginal hysterectomy, the first thing I'm going to do is tie the labia back with some silk sutures. Um, these are just stay sutures to keep the labia out of the way. Um, it gives me a little more room, a little better visualization, but it's also pulling the vagina laterally to some extent, making it easier when we put the retractor in and less likely to get any burn should um, there be the propensity to do that. In the past year, surgeons in general have been very concerned about the rising costs of surgical procedures and we're getting pushback from hospitals and from insurance companies to minimize the cost and the equipment that we use. I have found by specifically picking um, appropriate instruments or appropriate energy sources is number one, the patient's gonna have less operating room time and that's probably the most expensive cost, how long we're in the operating room. And again, I don't wanna rush during surgery, but I wanna be efficient during surgery and efficiency leads to shorter time and less cost. In addition, the patient's not gonna be required to remain in the hospital as long as if I use older clamp cut and tie methods. They're gonna go home in 12 to 24 hours and the patient is gonna get back to work much quicker. So by investing in one energy source during the case, I feel overall I'm saving the hospital money, the insurance company money, and that patient is gonna be back and more productive much quicker than if I was using the old-fashioned clamp, cut, and tie uh, products.